Gene has has single handedly alienated just about everybody on the planet. You know, first first he attacks you know uh, immigrants, and then he 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 belittles poor people by saying you know be nice to the rich people because we're the ones that give you jobs. You know, then he attacks people with depression, alcoholics, drug addicts. You know, um, I mean the only thing left for him to do is attack you know the, the you know the whole gay. Uh, movement and you know i've heard him do that in private so that's probably still yet to come you know i don't think he makes any sense you know he prides himself on being such an intellectual you know he he brags about being able to speak seven languages you know but when it comes to uh, being knowledgeable about you know you know the human condition depression is a very serious disease i've suffered from it in my lifetime i know my daughter suffers from it uh, you know, alcoholism is a disease, and so is drug addiction. You know, it's the disease of you know, addiction. You know, you either many people are born that way, and Gene just seems to you know, be ignorant of the whole fact. You know, I think it's time for Gene to go back to school and get educated. You know, in the health field, Paul and Gene still you know refer to me as a drunk and a drug addict. You know, and it's unfortunate because you know it's really hitting below the belt. You know, it was bad enough that they hit me when I was down, when I was really suffering and active, you know. And, and you know, Gene used to make statements like he was saying Ace is unemployable, you know, Ace is a drunk and a drug addict. You know, now, as of recent, since they really can't call me a drunk and a drug addict anymore, you know, now they're calling me a racist. I mean, it's unbelievable the stuff that comes out of their mouths. They're grasping at straws. I feel sorry for them. In the months and weeks leading into... The induction, there was some mudslinging here and there. You know, Gene was saying that you and Peter don't deserve to wear the paint anymore. Uh, <laughs> Paul was calling you anti-Semitic. Like, it, it just seemed really ridiculous. I mean, the, the anti-Semitic stuff is completely ludicrous. I'm engaged to a Jewish gal. We've been living together for five years. I've worked with Jewish people my whole life. I have tons of Jewish friends. So for him to make a crack like that. You know what the problem is with Paul? You know, for years they, they, they said I was a drunk, I was a drug addict, I was unemployable, you know, I was undependable. They can't say that anymore, so now they're grasping at straws. It's, it, it's, you know, it's sad. Paul's the one who seemed to be very vocal about you guys not, not being, uh, you and Peter not playing at the, at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He was the one on Twitter, because everyone blames Gene, but on Twitter, Paul was the one really bashing the hall. I think, I think Gene would have done it, I think Paul said no. Why Paul, do you think he said no? Why would Paul say no? That pissed off a lot of people, including uh, a few in this room. You know, 40 years, you, you they get couldn't the, give the fans 15 minutes. Right, 15 lousy minutes with the four guys. Yeah. Well, that, you know, they were afraid of history repeating itself. You know, the last time the four of us reunited on, on uh, Unplugged MTV, they had to scrap their album they had just recorded and do a reunion tour. You know, they didn't want to do anything to tarnish their 40th anniversary tour with two fake guys. Right. Wow. So you think that if uh, if they had played with you guys, it would have been, people would have been like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Well, it, I'm not. You know, I'm not saying that the, the fans were demanded a reunion, but it definitely would have you know confused a lot of fans. I mean, there's a lot of people up there that still think it's me. I get phone calls all the time. Hey, so I hear you playing here. I hear you playing in Texas. I hear you playing in Chicago. I go, that's not me. That's some guy wearing my makeup. That's got to be infuriating, obviously. Yeah, I mean, thank God I still get checks from them, but I mean, it's still, you know, it doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't sit well with the f hardcore fans. The new fans don't know any better. Right. But, I mean, it was, like you said, it was 15 lousy minutes to yeah. have all four of you guys, you know. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's they a big deal. They requested it. They wanted the four originals to reunite, the right. four inductees. Me right. and Peter were definitely up for it. You know, we talked about it, and then over the course of a couple of months, you know, all of a sudden they wanted to do it with, with Tommy and Eric. And then they said, well, well you guys can join in. You know, I mean, I'm not going to sit there and watch Tommy and Eric, you know, in my makeup and in Peter's makeup perform songs that we wrote and that, you know, Costumes yeah. and makeup that we created. I mean, we're being on it, not those guys. It was right. ridiculous. Would Eric and Tommy have felt good about that? Like, being, not that they, like, they're on it. Look, they're just doing a gig. They, you know, they got to go out and make a living, and now they're in Kiss. But would they have felt good playing those songs at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I don't think it bothers them. I think they're doing it for a paycheck. I sure. think if, uh, if Gene told Tommy to dress up, you know, like a, uh, a circus clown, he'd be doing it. You're the, you're Tommy Thay hasn't come up with an original idea his whole life. I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know that too. Know, yeah. Why do you know that? Please. I just know that. I Please. Just, Jimmy kind of knows his kiss. Uh, yeah, I just uh, oh. it just drives me. Did crazy. you get a taste of the merch? That was the only. Oh other. yeah, I still got. I, I, get like nice I said earlier, I still got chunks. Now right. yeah, I'm sure they're not. You know, paying me the full amount. You know, my my attorney's ready to sue their asses, but we'll see what happens down the road. It's always hard when somebody else has the numbers, because then you're like, what do I do? Do yeah. I, you know, do I fucking audit them and make this uh, well, cost myself know, more money? Auditing always costs bread, so you got to figure mm -hmm. out whether uh, is it worth auditing. And my attorney said yes, so you know, we'll see what happens. So is, is Paul more? Everyone thinks Gene runs the band, but it no, seems like Paul's Paul, running the band. He is right. Paul runs the band. <laughs> and I was on the internet. I was reading a lot of statements about you know Gene's uh, statement about depression, and they're calling Gene the, you know the front man of the band. And I know that's pissing off Paul because Paul's the front man of the band, right? You know, but you know he can't win that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Do those two get along at least? No, they fight like cats. Paul and, dogs. and Gene. Yes. I just always assumed those two got along. No. Yeah, you know, the problem with them is they're bonded at the hip because of uh, of Kiss and the makeup and the whole Kiss machine. Where, where, somebody said to me, "Hey, did you see? You know, did you know that Gene Simmons was the only human Gia pet in existence?" <laughs> 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 I wonder if Shannon waters his head at night. Do you, yeah. <laughs> Do you think are you talking about the uh, the hair the, the the hair he has now? The who what where? The, his hair is a little. Uh, well, yeah. it's, it's a little rough. I mean, it's Gene, a little rough. I mean, he, he's Gene. managed to piss off everybody. What happened? Yeah. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have fun today with Ace. You, well, uh, he, he went after people with depression. I know what you're talking about. He went, he's he gone did? after the poor people. He's gone after the immigrants. He's gone after, uh, I mean, all the people in the NFL are pissed at him because now he's backing Donald Sterling. You know. Oh, right. Uh, right. You know. Well, I don't think. Well, people... I mean, who's left? The gays? I've heard him bash gays in private, so that, I guess that's next. You know, you know what happened when Gene made that stupid statement about telling depressed people to kill themselves. You know that Doc McGee and, and Paul Stanley to put him in a room and said, you better write a retraction right now, you know? Right. Yeah, it was just bad everything timing. Gene does affects them. Yeah. So, you know, they got to be pissed off. I would be. I'm pissed off at them. I'm not even in the band anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but Gene would never shower with us. It was always me, Paul, and Peter. And Gene would never get in the shower with us. Small penis, probably. Micro penis. Wow, you've seen the video, right? <laughs> it wasn't bad. It, it, oh, it, uh, it was okay. I forgot about the video, It wasn't right. bad? It, 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 I think it's <laughs> Ace. Well, it depends on who you compare it yeah, to. Yeah, I, I hear Ace is, uh, let's be honest, Ace was fucking by far in Kiss known as the, uh, you know, he was the fucking, the coxman in Kiss. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, yeah, we won't I, even go there. Let's it, talk about the records. I, well, I, I have Gene, that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> You're, I don't know how that TV show is going to do that. The new reality show. Did you see it. any of it? I saw a little of it, and I, ha I couldn't watch it anymore. I had to turn it off. Wait, what's it's the reality so show? so goddamn boring. What? But if, you know, if those guys would stop buying football teams and opening up restaurants and stuff, maybe they'd make better records. I don't know. Mm. Uh, Gene and Paul did interviews in Guitar World, and uh, the Guitar World magazine, and alleged that you and Peter had to be taught how to play the kids' songs again. Give me a break. You know, Tommy sat with me because I didn't want to play him alone. I needed a rhythm guitar player. So Tommy was playing rhythm guitar while I, uh, you know, I worked on the leads. You know, if I made a mistake, Tommy would correct me because he has every lead I've ever played in my lifetime memorized in his brain. So uh, that was the only plus to that. Right. I mean, I don't know how I would feel if I had to imitate somebody else 24-7. You know, I want to be me. I want to be me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know. Did you have to, I mean, obviously you did. I mean, you created the the, the Kiss, uh, your your Ace Fraley famous makeup. Did you have to sell them the rights to to? to I, I licensed them the rights. Ah, you licensed it. And I get, uh, I get checks quarterly. Gotcha. So is that something that, like, uh, like in 10 years they have to renew, or? I don't know. My lawyer said, you know, there's, uh, in the future, you know, there's some gray areas about, you know, hmm. whether or not I'm going to get it back or uh, renegotiate. Interesting. And, you know, they're examining that right now. You know, I mean, Paul recently said that they own the makeup. That, that's bullshit. Hmm. They don't own it. They leased it. Wow. Um, the question I had was from Psycho Circus, if you remember that stuff. I got a special disc that had two songs. It had Psycho Circus and In Your Face. Uh, in Your Face was my favorite song out of all of them. How come that one didn't make it on Psycho Circus? You, you remember have that to one? ask Paul and Gene those questions, because those are the control oh, really? freaks that ran that record. You know, they, they, I was lucky to yeah. get one song. You know, really? Pete, I don't think Peter yeah. got a song, did he? 
Well, the only song that everyone has said on Psycho Circus that's actually the original Four Guys, and it was billed as a reunion record, was was your song "Into the Void." I know that you yeah. wrote that. That's the only song on that whole record where all four of you guys actually and play you, on. You it. know, I, I've read some some uh, statements by those guys and other people about that record, and they're saying, "Yeah, well, Ace didn't show up for the other songs. I wasn't invited to any of the other recording sessions. You know, they had other people playing on the records." But it wasn't, you know, it's not that I didn't want to, you know, I wasn't invited, you know. I said to Paul, you know, this is supposed to be a reunion record. How come Peter's not playing drums on all the tracks and stuff? And, you know, I'd like to have a lot more input. And he goes, the fans don't care. You know, that's Paul Stanley. What are mm. you going to do? Well, I think, I mean, by all accounts, Paul is the guy who runs Kiss. Gene is the is the mouth and the face, but Paul pulls all the strings and, and runs the show. That's what I hear. And uh, it seems to be there's a lot of proof of that out there. Because if you look at when the Hall of Fame was first announced, the first guy who did an interview was Gene in Rolling Stone. He was the first guy anybody heard from. Mm -hmm. And when he was asked in that interview if he would play with you and Peter for a song, sure, why not? It's a celebration. How could it hurt? Let's have fun. Someone got a hold of him real quick because the day after that interview came out, he did a total 180. So, hmm. you know, someone got in his ear and I, you know, and we know who that and person we know was. Who that is and said, no, this is not what's happening. And there's a big thought that Gene runs Kiss because he's so out there. But anyone will tell you that Paul these days pulls all the strings. I mean, it's just really unfortunate that after 40 years, they couldn't give the fans 15 minutes. How close did it get to ever you get ever getting up and playing with them? I mean, I know there was a lot of talk leading up to the actual night before they just said no, not playing at all. But was there a point where it ever you felt like it was close that it actually may come off for a song? The closest it got to be was that they wanted to perform with uh, the current lineup, and they said if I put on a makeup, I could get up and do a couple of songs. And at that point, you know, I said, I said to myself, you know, if I get up next to Tommy in, in my costume, I'm going to blow Tommy off the stage because there is only one space ace. And I think after I agreed to do it, which they probably didn't think I was going to agree to, they had second thoughts and they pulled the plug on that idea. So you turned it around on them and you said, sure, I'll come, sure. I'll take the challenge, so to speak. Yeah. And then you're saying they pulled it. And when, when you said yes, they said, no, we're not going to do it. I said, I'll take the Pepsi <laughs> <laughs> And I don't, you know, you know why? I, I just figured out they were trying to use psychology with me. I think they thought I was going to say no. And then you know what? They could have gone on the press and said, well, Ace turned us down. Right. And that would have been an outer. That, I, that would have been the scapegoat for them to say, uh, well, that's why it didn't happen. Ace refused to play. But, you know, that's not the case. And uh, it's public record at this juncture. What do you think of Tommy as Ace? What do you think? I mean, he's dressed as you. He's doing your thing. What do you think of him as, let's, let's be honest, he was in a Kiss tribute band before this yeah. uh, as you. So wh the little bit you've seen, what, do you, what is your evaluation? No, he, he's not Ace Frehley by any stretch of the imagination, number one. Number two, what bothers me the most is that I know the new fans that Kiss are getting don't know it, you know. A lot of people that see Tommy up there think he's the original guy that created the makeup, that wrote great songs and wrote all those solos that he's performing, but he's not, you know. He's just a guy up there copying me and trying to move like me and try to sing like me and trying to play like me, you know. And, it, you know, that's what bothers me the most. I mean, the real hardcore fans know, but the new fans, a lot of them don't know. And you were in Kiss at one point with Eric Singer as Peter. You were in a yeah. version of the band. What was your take on that? That was okay. I mean, Eric's such a solid drummer. He's a pleasure to play with because, you know, you know the, you know the beat's always going to be there. But as far as the image of it, it had to be strange for you to turn, turn around and see a guy as dressed as Peter, I would think. Well, you know, I don't see as good as I used to, so when I look back... I can't tell the difference. <laughs> and this, you know, like I, you know, just like a lot of fans don't know. I, mean, I can't tell you how many times I get phone calls and people say, "Hey, Ace, you playing? I heard you playing here. I heard you playing there. You know, can you get me tickets?" I go, "I'm not in the band anymore." You know, some people still are oblivious to that whole thing. I mean, I, I saw a couple of you know, cover kiss cover bands online that you know are better than. <laughs> 
they have a lot more excitement, and, and they got the moves a lot better than the current lineup at Kiss. 